Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a thriller films from 2021, titled Till Death. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens with our protagonist, Emma, meeting a man named Tom in a hotel room, where they share a drink together. We don't get a whole lot of backstory here, but Emma seems distracted and tells Tom that they cannot see each other anymore. Tom tries to convince her otherwise, but Emma is adamant about ending the extramarital affair. As she's walking out, he begs to see her one more time the next day, but Emma tells him that she can't because it's her anniversary. The next day she goes to visit her husband, Mark, at his place of work, where his assistant gives her flowers and wishes her a happy anniversary. When she's entering her husband's office, she comes across a confidential police file detailing the time she was robbed and stabbed years ago. We are then taken to a flashback scene of a failed robbery attempt that ended up injuring the perpetrator in the eye. Emma is interrupted when her husband Mark enters the office, and we learn that Mark is a big shot lawyer, whose latest case is revoking the parole of the man who attacked Emma in the past. Emma asks him if he misses putting people in jail instead of keeping them out, but Mark, who now works as a criminal attorney says he prefers the money. The two of them take the elevator, when Tom joins them on the next level down. Well, now that we know Tom slept with his boss's wife, and the two of them have to act like they don't know each other. Emma and Mark proceed to a restaurant to have their anniversary dinner, and Mark gives her a diamond necklace as an anniversary gift. Emma also prepared a gift for him, a pair of tickets to the Super Bowl, but he rudely pushes it away, saying that the team sucks that year. They then witness a man across the room propose to his girlfriend, and Emma looks longingly, remembering the time when she was happy with her husband. Mark then puts the necklace on her, and here we also learn that they've been married for 11 years. After the dinner, Mark puts a blindfold over Emma's eyes, and throws a surprise for her by driving them over to a secluded lake house that they used to go to when they were younger. When they arrive, Emma decides to explore the house, and finds a dark room full of pictures of them together. She plays the turntable, and smiles as she reminisces the good times they used to have. Emma makes her way upstairs, following the rose petals into the bedroom, and finds Mark waiting with two glasses of champagne. He gives her a heartfelt apology for not being a good husband, and tells her that he wants them to try and fix things from this moment on. The two then proceed to make love to each other. In the morning, Emma wakes up and finds her husband sits on the bed beside her. Here she finds her wrist handcuffed to Mark's, then he suddenly points a gun to his head, and to everyone's surprise, kills himself. Emma tries screaming for help, but of course there is no one around. She tries the phone to call the cops but it's dead, and she tries shooting the chain with the gun, but there isn't any bullet left. With no other choice, she drags Mark's dead body with her to the walk-in closet, and finds her wedding dress hanging there. She takes the dress and we can see that there is a safe behind it. Emma puts the dress under Mark's body to make it easier for her to drag him around, but when she is about to head downstairs, she ungracefully tumbles down with the corpse. She tries looking for her phone, but finds that it has been submerged in the flower vase, and upon fishing it out, learns that it is unsalvageable. She checks every drawer and cabinet in the kitchen, where she finds a car keys. Emma then struggles her way into the car with Mark's dead body literally weighing her down. When she attempts to start it, the car won't start because the fuel tank has been completely emptied. Her and Mark's wedding song suddenly starts playing, with a recording of Mark's voice passive aggressively explains that he did this to her because Emma was ungrateful. As it turns out, he found out about her affair with Tom and therefore refused to forgive her, let alone let her live a happy life. Emma returns inside the house to wash the blood off her face, but then realizes that she is unable to take off the necklace Mark gave her last night. This frustrates her, until she comes up with another idea. She goes to the basement, thinking that she might be able to find some hardware there, but unfortunately, the place has been picked clean. She begins ranting about how Mark was a hypocrite, because he's had a share of affairs with different women too, as she recalls the time she washed lipstick and glitter out of his shirt. Frustrated, she drags him back upstairs with all her might, and lies on the floor out of exhaustion. Emma then decides to revisit the dark room, and this time, she finds the mugshot of the man who attacked her in the attempted robbery flashback we saw in the beginning. She also finds a record player that says play me, 
and goes on to play it. It is then that she grimly learns that it is a recording of herself being interviewed about the attempted robbery. We learn here that the attacker managed to stab Emma in the back, but she also managed to hurt the man, presumably by stabbing him in the eye. Triggered by her past trauma, Emma is unable to listen to the rest of the recording, so she loses her cool. When Emma returns to the living room, she realizes that someone is outside the door. As it turns out, it is Tom, the man she had an affair with. Tom tells her that he came rushing to her aid, after receiving a series of text messages from her saying that she's in trouble. Obviously, we all know that Emma never sent those texts, Mark did. After noticing what's happening to Emma, Tom tells her that the FBI raided Mark's office, and that Mark's entire carrier was going up in flames. Emma now understands why her husband dared to shoot himself, and she tells Tom that they need to call the police as soon as possible, because she is convinced Mark has concocted an elaborate plan to set them up. However, when Tom walks out to get his phone from the car, they see a truck in the distance making its way towards the lake house. Tom who is suspicious decides to head out, and tells Emma to not open the door to anyone but him. The truck pulls up in front of the lake house, and Tom confidently confronts the man that steps out. His name is Jimmy, and he claims that he's come to fix a burst pipe. Tom offers to pay him what he would charge for the job, and asks him to leave. When Jimmy is about to leave, another man named Bobby steps out of the vehicle and does this. Jesse, get back in your car. Tom gets repeatedly stabbed, and the two men break their way in. While Tom is bleeding out on the floor, we learn that Jimmy is compassionate, while his brother Bobby is absolutely cold-blooded. While the two men look around the house, Emma has made her way outside, dragging Mark's dead body along with her. She makes her way over to the boat shed, and severs Mark's arm so that she no longer has to carry the body around anymore. Not long after, Jimmy and Bobby come across the body, but Emma is no longer there. Unbeknownst to them, Emma is hiding right below them. Now that she's seen Bobby's face, she realizes that Bobby is the man who attacked her in the past, and based on their conversation, Emma learns that it was Mark who hired them to come here, promising them that they'd be given access to the lake house's safe, which contains diamonds. But now Mark is dead, and so Bobby and Jimmy are on the lookout for Emma, because she's the only other person who would know the combination to the safe. Emma comes out of hiding after the two men leave, and comes up with an idea. Jimmy studies the safe and informs Bobby that the safe requires both a combination and a fingerprint, so Bobby goes to retrieve Mark's dead body. Meanwhile, Emma is now dragging the boat's fuel tank through the snow, but then... She almost gets caught when Jimmy exits the house to look for her, but she eventually makes it inside the car garage, and begins trying to pump the fuel into the car's fuel tank. Unfortunately, this process makes some noise, which prompts Bobby to go investigate. Emma hides under the car while Bobby walks around and slashes a tire to make sure Emma isn't able to leave with the car. Emma sneaks away from Bobby and exits the garage. She makes it back inside the house, while Jimmy is busy dragging Mark's dead body inside. Bobby who is suspicious follows closely behind her, and Emma ends up gets trapped in the staircase between Bobby in the basement and Jimmy in front of the door. The clever Emma presses the alarm button on the car key, which successfully distracts Bobby and Jimmy, making them rush back inside the garage. Emma uses this brief opportunity to mourn over Tom's death, while outside the house, Bobby explains to Jimmy that he refuses to let Emma walk out alive, because he's still bitter over the fact that she put him behind bars for the past 10 years after the failed robbery attempt. They return inside the house again and continue to look for Emma, knowing that she must be inside the house somewhere. Bobby goes to check upstairs and Jimmy stays on the first floor. Once up there, Bobby hears a noise in the attic, before going there, and begins to look around, right when Emma comes out of hiding and attacks him. She then takes his car keys, while Jimmy who heard the commotion rushes his way upstairs to find his brother unconscious. Emma hits Jimmy with a golf club, locks him inside a room, and breaks the door knob. She then makes her way outside and tries to start the car, but Bobby who is apparently awake now stops her. While this is going on, Emma manages to reach for a phone and dials 911. Jimmy walks up to them and pleads for Bobby to give this up, and get away before the cops get here, but Bobby is too stubborn. He proceeds to kick Emma unconscious. Emma wakes up to find that she is once again handcuffed to her dead husband, with Bobby and Jimmy dragging the safe closer to her. 
She tries telling them that she doesn't know the safe's combination, but Bobby who doesn't believe her begins to beat her and subdue her. He threatens to stab her again, prompting Jimmy the compassionate one to stop him, but Bobby shrugs him away. Jimmy then reaches for Mark's gun and points it at Bobby, because he is sick of all the violence. Emma suddenly voices that she will give them the combination, as long as they uncuff her. Jimmy does as she says, and she proceeds to give them the combo to the safe. The safe finally opens, but unfortunately, it is empty save for an engraved metal that says that the diamonds inside the safe have been converted into the necklace Emma is wearing now. Emma begins to panic, saying that she has tried taking off the necklace but it won't open. The cold-blooded Bobby is absolutely ready to decapitate Emma just to get to the diamonds, but Jimmy refuses to let him. Bobby shoves Jimmy out of the way and tries firing the gun, but it isn't loaded. He then proceeds to scuffle against Emma, until Jimmy interrupts and the two brothers begin scuffling. Bobby accidentally ramming Jimmy's head to the clothes hanger, instantly killing him. While Bobby pauses in shock, Emma gets up and reaches for a knife nearby. Bobby then faces her and swears he would kill her. The two scuffle against each other again, but this time, Emma manages to hit him with a heavy tool. She makes her way to escape, with Bobby going after her again, but he's the one chained to Mark this time. Bobby then trips down the stairs, while Emma makes her way to the garage and gets inside Mark's car. Bobby follows closely behind, and Emma panically backs the car up, breaking through the garage wall, then rams into the other cars. When she can't push the cars, she drives forward and hits Bobby in the process. However, the car slips in the snow, and ends up crashing to the boat garage. Bobby who somehow is still alright, struggles his way over to the crashed car with a murderous rage, but Emma is no longer inside. He finds Emma crawling her way through the frozen lake and follows her. They fight again, and Emma manages to stab him, but the impact his body makes when it hits the ground causes the ice to break, and both of them fall through. They scuffle some more underwater, and Emma gets the knife out of his shoulder, she incapacitates him finally escaping his grip. Emma then swims upwards, and breaks her way through the ice. The movie ends with Emma laying over the frozen lake. She takes off her wedding ring and rolls it into the water, while faint police sirens can be heard in the background. Okay guys. That's all the recap of Till Death 2021. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.